I recently partnered with Felder to upgrade all the larger tools in my shop to the hammer line of machines. I bought the Hammer A341 joiner planer combo over three years ago, and I've loved owning it ever since. Now, I will get to experience some of their other offerings. And in this video, I will be sharing the setup and assembly of my new N4400 bandsaw. When the bandsaw shows up, it will be packaged very well and looks like this. As you can see, it is sitting just outside of my garage door after delivery. Now, the reason for this is because it actually wouldn't fit under the garage door opening. I have a seven foot tall door and the height was just a little too tall. As a result, I was forced to remove it from the pallet here. This is just something to keep in mind if you have ordered one and it is on the way. Along with a 2x4 frame constructed around the machine, it will also be attached to the pallet itself. I removed all the screws holding it down and proceeded to slightly tip the machine to kick the 4x4s out from underneath. From there, I was able to just turn the bandsaw so that I was able to get one end off of the pallet. Then I could simply just lift it up a bit and slide the pallet out from underneath without any problems. From here, I would no longer have any issues with getting the bandsaw into the garage. Next, I used my dolly to wheel it into the shop. Now here I would caution people to make sure that their dolly is actually rated for the weight of the machine. And I'm pretty sure that on mine, I stretched it to its limit here, but to assist in this process, I did use a ratchet strap to help keep it steady while I was wheeling it into the shop. Once I was in the shop, I removed the wrap and all of the loose items that are contained within. And here's a pro tip. I would highly recommend doing this before moving the bandsaw around. If I would have removed everything prior to taking it off the pallet, it would have been significantly lighter and easier to maneuver. The cast iron table is by far the heaviest part. So removing that would have made a massive difference. After removing all of the parts and placing them on my assembly table, I took a few moments to clean off any shipping grease that may have been left on the parts prior to the install. It'll just help when I actually go to install the pieces onto the machine itself. To do this, I just used a rag and some WD-40 and cleaned everything off. The first part that I installed onto the bandsaw was the cast iron table. Now there are four bolts on the bottom that do need to be removed. Once those are removed, I then took it over to the bandsaw and lined the top up with the mounting holes on the machine. I simply loosely threaded the four bolts in place and then went through and tightened each one of them down. Now that the table was on, I moved on to the blade. And there's really nothing special about this process as it is just like other machines. It just has different knobs, but the whole idea is the same. I put the blade on, I adjusted the tension, and then I adjusted the tracking or the placement of the blade on the wheels. Next, I installed the fence. The N4400 does have a round bar that the fence rides on, and the main part of the fence slides on from the left-hand side. Once this is in place, I could simply slide the high-low fence onto it.
From there, I wanted to check and see how square the table was to the blade. And it was actually very close and only required a minor adjustment. And the adjustment is very simple. There is one post on the bottom that will allow you to move the table up and down in small increments. A couple of minutes of adjustments and I was perfectly square. I checked the fence squareness to the table next. This was also a simple process and it only involved loosening the bolt on the left side of the fence bar and then raising it slightly until the fence was square. One of my favorite features on the hammer machines are these brackets that will accept the different support tables and other accessories. Since I already have the jointer planer combo, the extensions are interchangeable between the machines. To mount these, you simply first have to install the supplied bracket. This bracket will house the aluminum extrusion that the support tables attach to. Now, if you are installing these, then I assume that you have the support table. If so, using that actually works really well to determine the placement of the extrusion on that bracket. By using a straight edge and then the support table, I was able to simply apply upward pressure to the extrusion until the support table made contact. After that, I tightened it down and I had perfect placement of the extrusion. The final step was to add the plug. Now, hammer machines do not come with plugs. You must add the plug yourself. This machine will run on a 240 volt, 20 amp circuit. The plug that I am using is a NEMA 6-20 rated for 250 volts. I have always been able to find these at my local big box store, but they are readily available online as well. Now these are incredibly easy to attach. The ground wire will be indicated on the plug with green. The other two wires go into the other two slots, tighten the screws down, and you are done. Once wired, the only thing left to do is start cutting. I'm very excited to have this new machine in the shop, and I really hope that you guys found this information helpful for your own assembly. As you can see, the assembly process on this bandsaw is very easy and will not take a lot of time at all. If you have any specific questions about this bandsaw, be sure to leave them in the comments section because I will do a video answering all of those questions in about four to six months after I've had some time to use the machine more heavily. Thanks for watching.